Boom! What's up, guys? We're so excited that you're joining with us this week for our Incredible World Online Vacation Bible School. We hope that you have a fun time. We hope that you learn about Jesus, and we hope that you are reaching out and, and telling your friends about Jesus this week. Uh, this is a way for, even though we can't meet in person, this is a way for us to still have a ton of fun and still love, love Jesus and learn more about him. Ultimately, this whole week is about learning how the God that God is the creator of all, that God has loved us, that God sent his son to die for us on the cross. And so we hope that as you watch this video and then over the next couple of weeks, as you uh, go back to school, that God sent you into school and he helps you tell your friends about who Jesus is and what he's done for your life. And so with that being said, guys, I want to pray for you. Uh, I want to lift him up. And so will you close your eyes and bow your heads with me? Uh, dear Lord, we thank you so much for this time where we can have vacation Bible school at home. Lord, for an opportunity for us to invite our friends over uh, to sing and dance and do crafts and do Bible studies and to watch drama videos and science videos. Lord, we thank you for all this opportunity to learn more about you, to worship you, and ultimately to give you all the glory with all of our lives. Lord, we thank you for being our creator. We thank you for being our savior. With that being said, Lord, thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, guys. So we're going to jump into our first song. Will you stand up with me and dance and sing? Let's go. So this game is called Time Be. So this game is called Time Began. Do you realize that there was actually a time when there was no time? Do you think you know when time began? Did you say when God created? Yes, that's actually when time began. So this little game has to do with timing. 
And the only supplies you need for this is really something to time you, like a phone with a stopwatch on it, or maybe you've got a stopwatch, or maybe just somebody who's really good at counting. And so what you're going to do is you're going to, first, you're going to pick a starting point. The second thing you're going to do is pick an ending point, okay? And then the third thing you're going to do is you're going to pick how you want to get from your starting point on one side to your ending point on the other side. Man, this game would be so much fun if you played it outside, but it could work inside too. If it's a rainy day, you could make your ending point, you know, across the room or even upstairs or downstairs or whatever you want to do, okay? And then the last thing you're going to do, you got your starting point, you got your ending point, you got your way that you're going to get there, which is maybe it's walking, maybe it's hopping, maybe it's skipping, jumping, however you want to get there. That's your third thing. The fourth thing you need to do is you need to pick how long you want to give yourself to get from your starting point to your ending point. So let's do an example. I'm going to say our starting point's right here. My ending point is way across the room. And for the first round, we're going to do it just walking. We'll keep it simple. And we're going to try to get there in 14 seconds. So everybody's going to line up at the starting point. And somebody's going to say, go, and you've got to try to get to that ending point in exactly 14 seconds. You don't want to try to get there early. You don't want to try to get there late. So you might have to walk slow if you picked a long time, or you might have to go very fast if you picked a short time. And then we can play it again. Maybe we'll do hopping for 82 seconds or crawling for 59 seconds. You can make up those any way that you want to. And you can play this game as many times as you want to. You can even change your starting point and your ending point if you want to. But you're going to have fun trying to get to that point in exactly that amount of time. And whoever is closest will be the winner. So I think we're going to try this one. We're going to go from our starting point to our ending point in 14 seconds by just walking. Are you ready? Room. On your mark. Get set, go. Did I do it? Was I close? I don't know. We'll find Nine out. Nine seconds approximately. Nine seconds. Oh, I was off by like five seconds. So I don't know if I won. I have to check with the other people, but go and find a starting point, an ending point, a way to go, and how long you want to go, and have fun. Hey, this one's called Creation Art Smarts. You just need a piece of paper, or if you're outside, a sidewalk works great with sidewalk chalk, okay? But we're inside today, so we're using sidewalk chalk on some roll paper. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna just draw the days of creation, but, in between each day, you have to do some physical activity for the number of days it is. So for instance, maybe on day one, I'll draw a light bulb, okay? And because God made light, all right? And then after I do that, maybe I'm gonna pretend like I'm gonna shoot one basket. Or if I'm outside, I could really shoot one for real, okay? Then on day two, uh, you know, he, he made the sky, I'm gonna make some clouds, okay? And maybe on that day, maybe I would do two jumping jacks. Okay? So you can pick whatever you want. It can, you could be running, you could be moving, whatever. If you're outside, you even have more space. But pick seven different activities. You're going to do it one time, then the next one two, the next one three, four, five, six, seven. And you're going to draw all the days of creation. This is a great one if you just have one person. You can do this by yourself. But you could also make a competition if you want to see who gets done first. All right? So have fun playing. Creation Art Smarts! All right, this game is called Creation Relay. How many of you like relay races? I love them. They're so much fun. All right, so today is Creation Day, and we've been talking about how God created everything in six days, six 24-hour days. Now, sometimes people will say, 24 hours, that's not very much time for God to have made some, all that stuff. But you know what? Genesis 18 14 tells us, is anything too hard for the Lord? I mean, 
he wouldn't be God if it was too hard for him, right? And that's why I love him so much. He can do anything. He's incredible. So as we play this game, let's remember we serve an incredible, wonderful, loving creator. Okay, so the supplies are really simple for this. You just need two pieces of poster board, or it can even just be two pieces of paper, something to write with. It could be markers, pens, whatever. We've got a Creation Days help sheet that you can run off if you want to. And you might want to get something for a start line. You don't have to. You can just kind of, in your mind, know where it is, but it kind of helps to maybe get a rope or something, a jump rope or something. All right, that's all you need. Now, you need to divide into two teams. If there's only one child, hopefully the adult who's with you, they can be the other team, okay? So that's two teams. If you end up with different amounts of people on the teams, like you have two on one team and one on one team, the one person just needs to go twice, okay? So that you're going the same amount, since it's a relay race. Now, all there is to it is on the start when you say go, you're going to race up. The first person on each team is going to draw the first day's creation, something as fast as you can, okay? Maybe you'll draw something that represents light, and you have to say light or whatever, okay? And then you run back. Then the next person goes, and they're going to draw something God created on day two. Run back. Next person, and you might have to be doing this multiple times, okay? The next person runs up, and they're going to do day three and so forth, and go all the way through day seven. You got to remember, did God make anything on that day? And then run back. Whoever gets the whole thing done first and correct with the right stuff is the winner. Now, you might play this outside. It's really fun to play outside. You can just space out and have that space and fun. But if you need to play it inside, we're kind of stuck inside today because it's raining. So that's okay. You could start in one room and you could run to another room where your paper is and then you could come back, okay? So just be creative, grab your stuff, and here we go. We're going to show you how to play. On your mark, get set, go! Day one. Day one. Light. Light. Oh, light. Okay. Ah! Oh my God! Oh, 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 okay. Right. I need a different color. Day two. I shouldn't be using green, but it doesn't matter. Okay. Clouds. 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 Okay. So day one, I drew light and dark. Day two, we drew some clouds because God made the sky. We're gonna keep going and do all seven days. So have a blast. We'll see you later. And don't forget. Hey guys, we're so glad you're joining us for Bible Time. This is what it's all about. This is where we dive into God's Word. And so if you have a Bible, would you open with me to Genesis chapter 1, starting in verse 1. This is the very beginning of the entire Bible, probably the first page in your Bible. Genesis chapter 1, and we're talking about the creation. Now this is so amazing. Did you know there was a time when time wasn't? Did you know there was a time before time? We see in Genesis 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So in the beginning, before time existed, before matter existed, before we existed, the only thing that existed was God, and God has always existed. God the Father, God the Son, Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit have always been around in eternal relationship with one another, but everything else had to come into being at one time. And it's so amazing that God tells us about it first in the Bible. He says he created the heavens and the earth. Notice right away that God tells us who created everything. You know, scientists have tried to speculate and work around this without understanding that God is involved in it. This doesn't mean science is bad. We love science. God gave us science, but we can't do science without understanding who God is. So they try to create theories that say that this something came out of nothing, but really God created everything. We believe in science, but we also believe that God is the one who uses science. We believe God is the creator of the world. He moved and created. And so we're excited to see how God created everything in this next couple of verses. From careful study from the Bible, we can see that God is the one who created and God is the one who moved in history to do this. Now, do you think how long do you think it took God to create? Now, some people say the world was created in billions of years. 
billions and billions. And, and the more they talk, the more numbers they keep adding. But the Bible says heaven and earth were created by God in just six days. Now, was that hard? No, God could have done it in, like that. But God did it in six days for a reason. And he, it, nothing is hard for God. Look at how he creates. We see that he is the creator. Now the earth was formless and void and empty and darkness covered the surface of the watery depths and the spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the water. The Bible says that it was without form and void, meaning that, that it, there was nothing there. It was just kind of like water in the like vapor and just kind of vaporless. Can you imagine creating something from nothing? You know, you have a cake. Uh, if, you, if you're making a cake, it requires ingredients. If you have a cake, you typically, a lot of times nowadays, we have our, our pre-made cake box and we have eggs and we have oil or liquid or whatever the cake ingredients require. We, to make something, we have to have ingredients. But for God to create something, he doesn't require ingredients. God can make something out of nothing because he is the creator. He's the one who has the power to do that. It wasn't hard for God to do that. He can do, he can bring something from nothing. In the beginning, look at uh, verses two and three. It says, then God said, verse three says, then God said, let there be light. And there was light. I wish I could run all the way up there to that building and uh, to that uh, little room up there and turn off the lights and show you like how light flickers on and off. But you know how it is. Go to your light switch and flick it on and off. I'll give you a second. See? See? God created light. That's that, that thing that's coming in from the light bulbs and from outside. God created that. He spoke it into being and it exploded into the universe. Before God created, it was darkness, but God created, spoke and light came into existence. That's so exciting. That their light wasn't the sun. It was just light that God created. Now look at verse five. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. Evening came and then morning, the first day. In the first day, God spoke and set apart darkness and light. He set apart day and night. He created, and because of that, there was evening and morning, the first day. Now, in the second day, we see that God, verse 6, let there be an expanse between the waters, separating the water from the water. So God made the expanse and separated the water from under the expanse and the water from above the expanse, and it was so. And God called the expanse sky evening came and then morning and then the second day so we see god creates the sky god creates the air that we breathe now here do something with me go take a deep breath hold it hold it hold it that's god allowing us to breathe we have air in front of us we have the air that separates the water and the sky like we have this this place where we can exist I want you to jump for me. I'm not going to jump because I don't want to get hurt. But ready? Three, two, one, jump. So you're in the air. God has created that space for you to exist, to move, and to have your being. He is powerful. Without air, we die within seconds. You take the biggest breath of air and you can hold it. And you can only hold it for at most a minute, probably. Like there is so much that we can only do because God created the sky. So God and the second day created this place called sky. Now let's look what's next. Verse nine. Then God says, let the water under the sky be gathered into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and he called the gathered waters seas and God saw it and it was good. So we see here, God gathered up the oceans, God gathered up the waters and put them in one place and he created dry land. And that was a place for us to walk and live and to, to have homes. God created the dry land and created the sea. Now, if we, we live in a town, if you're from Bristol, we have a lake and we have the river. We have water, bodies of water that God has gathered and placed here that we can have fun in, that we can enjoy. Like God is the one who created those things as well. So we see that God created it and it was good. God called the dry land earth and he called the gathering of the water sea and he saw it was good. Then God said, let the produce, vegetation, seed bearing plants, fruit trees and earth bearing fruit with seeds in it according to kind. And it was so. 
The earth brought forth vegetation, seed bearing plants according to their kind and trees bearing fruits with seeds according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Evening came and morning came the third day. So we see God gathers the land together and on the land, he causes vegetation or trees and plants and fruits and vegetables to sprout up. And isn't that amazing? We love, I don't know about you, but I love me some fruit, some sweet fruit. You think about potatoes, I love some vegetables, some good food. God created food here. God was sustaining and creating life. And now there's an important phrase I want you to notice here, according to its kind. Now, this pops up a couple times in Genesis 1, and it's letting us know that God created each species and kind so that they would be with their own kind. You think about dogs. We have dogs are according to their own kind. Dogs can make other dogs. We see dogs creating new kinds of dogs. We see different breeds of dogs, but dogs will always become dogs. Dogs don't become cats. Oranges always become new types of oranges. They don't all of a sudden become celery. So we see God created things in order and has this ordered way for the universe to function and work. And he is creating it and it's beautiful and good. You know, all the food that God is creating here is delicious and tasty. And so we see that he saw it and it was good. Evening and morning came the third day. There's 14. Then God said, let there be light in the expanse of the sky. And he separated the day from the night. And these were the signs of the festivals for the days and the years. They will be called lights in the expanse of the sky. And light provides light to the earth. God created two great light, the greater light to have dominion over the day and the lesser night to have dominion over the night, as well as the stars and planets. God placed them into the expanse of the sky to provide light on earth, to dominate the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. God saw it and it was good. So God created the sun and the moon so that we could have seasons and times. You know, here in Florida, we typically have, our, our seasons don't have a lot of variety. We have hot and less hot, but still God had cre has created the world so that there's different seasons and times and areas for us to experience different things. He's created the moon for us to see and the moon and its beauty reflecting the sun gives us light at night. And not only that, when we're looking up at night, we can see the beauty of the stars and the planets. And I love that, that God is so powerful. If you know anything about stars, stars are massive. And yet when it says that God is speaking them into existence, it just says, and he also created the stars. God is so powerful that a flippant sentence about how the stars came into being, it's just like, oh yeah, and he also spoke stars into being. Massive, huge stars. God spoke and they came into being. Isn't that amazing? Like God is so powerful. He made the two great lights and he, ex he put order into the way that they work. Evening and then morning came the fourth day. Man, isn't God so good? Look at the next day. Then God said, let the water swarm with living creatures and let the birds fly above and the earth across the expanse. So God created the large sea creatures and every living creature that moves and swarms in the water according to their kind. He also created every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good and God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters of the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came and morning came the fifth day. We see here, God creates all the animals according to their kind, all the birds according to their kind. God is moving and powerfully working to create animals. He speaks and it comes into being. The, the, the scientific word for this season is known as the Cambrian explosion. You know, there's a period in the, the rock layers as you look at and study geology where scientists look and all of a sudden it's full of animals. This is what we see in the scriptures that God speaks and animals come into being and it's massive and he commands them to spread out over all the earth to be fruitful and multiply so that we can have millions upon millions of animals. We see God in six short days is making everything and then by day five he's created plants and the animals and all the lights in the sea god is so amazing here
<laughs> and on day six, here, here's the best part of all. Look what it says. It says, verse 24, Then God said, Let the earth produce living creatures according to their kind, livestock, creatures crawling with wildlife, and all according to their kind, and it was so. So God made the wildlife of the earth according to their kind, and livestock according to their kind, and creatures that crawl on the earth according to their kind, and God saw it, and it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. They will rule the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky and the living waters and all the creatures that crawl on the earth. So God created man in his own image. He created them in his image. He created them male and female. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. Rule the fish of the sea, the bird of the sky and every creature that crawls on the earth. God created people and not just people. We're not just another kind of animal. God created us in his image. That means we're to be like him. That means we're to reflect what he's like. If you have a picture of someone you love, like you have a picture of your grandma or your mom or your dad, that picture tells you something about them. It tells you what they look like. It tells you what you remember about them. You don't want anyone to mess up that picture because you love them. And in the same way, we were created by God to tell the world what God is like. We were created to fill the earth and to multiply and to, to tell the world what God is like. Isn't that amazing? We were set apart from all the other animals, we're different. That's why, uh, you know, ultimately we see that we can we can eat chicken and we can eat uh, cows and we can uh, eat fruits and vegetables. To subdue it, to have dominion over the earth. We're to be rulers over the earth. We're to represent him and to rule over the earth. Wouldn't it have been cool to be there to see God's very good world. Look at verse 31. God saw all that he made and it was very good. Evening and morning came the sixth day. God created everything. And as we looked out at it, it was beautiful. It was amazing. It was think of the most beautiful things you can think of. Like here, think like name the most beautiful thing you, you can think of right now. Go. I know, isn't that amazing how beautiful God's creation is? And even now it's beautiful, but we know the world isn't as beautiful as it used to be because we'll get into that in a little bit, but because of sin entering into the world, there's a problem now and that Jesus is the answer for that. Jesus is the one who died to make the world beautiful again, to pay for our sin, which broke the world. Jesus comes in to fix what we have broken. And we'll get into that more throughout the rest of the week. But we see God created everything and it was good. Then we look at verses, chapter two, verses one and two. So the heavens and the earth and everything in them, they were complete by the seventh day. God completed his work and all that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work. God blessed the seventh day and declared it to be holy on it. And he rested from the work of creation. So one week had gone by and God had finished all of his work. Let's say the seven days of the week. To <coughs> Let's say the seven days of the week really fast. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Actually, sorry. Let's say the seven days of the week really fast. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Let's say them in the proper order. Sunday, Monday. Let's say the seven days of the week really fast. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We're all the way back at the beginning. Oops. Let's say the seven days of the week real fast. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Why do you think we have a seven day week? We have a seven day week because God created in six days and on the seventh day, he rested. It's amazing how God gave us this week as a weekly reminder of his power in creation. And we're supposed to take one of those days a week to rest because that's what God did. God rested to give us an example of how we're to live. Six days a week we work and then one day we 
rest. So we see how God has created the whole world, how God did it in six days, how God did it in a powerful and magnificent way. And so we hope that you've enjoyed this lesson. We hope you take away that God is powerful and that God is the creator of the world. And we hope that you've enjoyed this time. As we, we continue on with our activities, remember, God is the creator. Remember, ultimately, in six short days, everything was made. Say it with me. In six short days, everything was made. One more time. In six short days, everything was made. Wow, isn't God good? Looking forward to seeing you guys tomorrow as we dive back into the Bible. Praying for you guys. Enjoy the rest of online vacation Bible school. <coughs> Welcome to craft time, everybody. Today, we're making a wonder wheel. It looks something like this when it's finished. I'll tell you about how to do it in just a minute. But first, let's talk a little bit about this. Now, if you've never thought about it, when God made the days of creation in six days, it kind of lines up pretty cool because day one sort of lines up with day four, okay? So on day one, God made what? Light and dark, right? And on day four, he filled it up. He put in the sun and the moon and the stars. Isn't that cool? And then on day two, he made the sky and the sea. And what did he make on day five? He filled it up with the birds and the fish and all that. And on day three, what did he make? The plants and the land and all that. And on day six, he filled it up with man and all the land animals. So it's kind of fun and makes it easy for you to remember what he made on which day, if you think day one and four, two and five, three and six. All right, so that's that. Now, let's go ahead and get the materials. If you do not have exactly what I'm, I'm suggesting, that's okay. You can kind of just make up your own a little bit with what you have around the house. All right, so you need some paper to be able to run off the patterns, okay? And they can be in color or they can be in black and white. And you can color this if you just need to do it on white or you can run it off on color and you don't have to color it. All right, you'll need some kind of a popsicle stick or you can use a ruler or some other little stiff something or other, okay? You need something like a paper fastener, just one. And you need a pair of scissors. If you're kids, you need kids' scissors, okay? Um, and you need a, a little piece of tape. It can be masking tape, it can be any kind of tape. And you need something to color with. Now, I am a marker kind of a person, so I like the juicy, fun, bright colors of markers, but you can use crayons, colored pencils, whatever you want. All right, all you have to do is run off those patterns, and then once you do, you cut them out. So you're gonna have one that's gonna look like this, and you're gonna cut out this notch, you're gonna have one that's like this, it's this circle, okay? And all you do is stick them together. It's really, this is really very simple, okay? And you're going to poke a hole right where that dot is, and that's where you're gonna put your paper fastener, okay? Once you do that, on the back, you just open it up, okay? You may or may not need a little piece of tape to, probably will, but something to keep this on. You, you can either glue it on or you could tape it on your little um, stick. All right, so once you do that, you are done. And by the way, download links to all the patterns are in the description below. So, this is the illustrious Incredi world, huh? Impressive. And better yet, there's no one around to see me. Now, let's jump the fence. It's one small step for man and one giant leap for no! Oh, that was not cool, Millard. Oh, 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 oh. oh. What is that? It must be my cell phone. My cell phone's gone. It must be in my backpack. 
My backpack's gone too. I know, it came off when I jumped the fence. Oh, it's Mr. Romano. Hello? I thought you were never going to answer the phone. What took you so long? Uh, technical difficulties, sir. But uh, remember, we're supposed to use our code names. I'm Yellow Jacket, and you're Bumblebee. Forget the silly code names. You watch too much TV. So, did you get in? Yes. I jumped the fence. So what's it like? What's the fence like? No. <laughs> what's the park like? Is it as incredible as they say? Well, I have to admit, sir, it does look very nice. The landscaping is well manicured, and the buildings are bright and colorful, and everything seems so... All right, that's enough. I get the picture. Okay, you know what to do, right? Yes, sir. You can count on me. There's no way they're going to win that World's Best Theme Park Award this year. Well, they better not, or you're going to be scraping gum off the pavement for the rest of your life. That title belongs to us, Big Thrill Theme Park, and I don't intend to share it with anyone. Do I make myself clear? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. You make yourself very clear. Good. Don't fail me. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Can I help you find something? Uh, no. I was just looking for my, uh, uh, cell phone. And, uh, here it is. Well, I'm delighted you found it. You know, I don't believe we've met. My name is Mr. Peterson. I'm the park director. Park director? That's right. And what's your name? It's, uh, Grover. Uh, Millard Grover. Well, Millard Grover, do you mind if I ask why you're late? Late? You missed the staff meeting. Staff meeting? They didn't tell you about the daily staff meeting? Oh, of course. The daily staff meeting. So it's a daily, is it? Yes, and that means every day. Right. I'll need to make a note of that. Good. Now, I suggest you get into your uniform right away. The park opens in one hour. Uh, yes, Mr. Uh, Peterson. Peterson. Uh, yes, Mr. Peterson. <laughs> uh, Millard, the employee lockers are that way. There's a sign on the door that says employees only. Oh, of course. I just got turned around. Uh, thank you, Mr. Peterson. Uh, it was nice to meet you, Mr. Peterson. He better not be working the sky ride today, that's all I can say. Good morning, Mr. Peterson. Good morning, Miss Ryan. How are you today? I'm fine, sir. Guess what? We just received a call from Adventure TV. Really? What did they want? Well, they want to come visit the park and needed to speak with you. Well, I told them you'd return their call as soon as possible. Mm, Adventure TV coming to Incrediworld? That's kind of a big deal, isn't it? Okay, I'll call them as soon as I get back. I just need to speak with the guys here first. What's wrong? I, I just don't trust them. I mean, they always seem to have something up their sleeve. Who? Uh, Gabe and Cody? Yeah, Gabe and Cody. I had no idea you felt that way. Do you want me to say something to them? No, that's all right. I'm a big girl. I can handle it. Well, as you can see, there's nothing to worry about because they're not even around. <laughs> see? That's what I'm talking about. All right, time to stop playing with the sound effects. When are they ever going <laughs> to grow up? Yes. That's okay, Miss Ryan. We'll let the extreme team do that. Good idea. Sorry, we just got this incredible new animal sound library and we had to try it out on someone. Of course you did. That elephant is awesome. What's wrong, Miss Ryan? Why are you hiding? I'm just keeping a safe distance. 
I never know what might be flying or crawling or slithering around either of you. What's that you're eating? Mealworms. Ew. See what I mean? They're not bad. Really? You want to try oh, some? Disgusting. You're kidding, right? No, look. You want some? They're very nutritious. <laughs> I'd rather take a vitamin. I'll take some. Sure, help yourself. Oh, man. You took all the big juicy ones. Sorry. That's okay. Mm -mm. Delicious. See? You sure mm. you don't want any? I think I'm going to be sick. I guess we should talk about something else. Mm. Hey. Are we still on for staff devotions tomorrow? Yes. As a matter of fact, that's why I came over here in the first place. I wanted to make sure you remembered. So have you decided what you're going to do yet? Well, we thought we'd do a couple creature features since that is our specialty. Great. I was hoping you'd say that since most of the staff doesn't get to see your show. I know. It's just that the hard part is deciding which ones to do. It doesn't matter. They're all fascinating if you ask me. Every time I watch one of your shows and learn about some animal... I am just amazed at the handiwork of God. I know. Isn't it incredible? You mean, isn't he incredible? How anyone can think that it all just happened by chance is totally beyond me. It doesn't make any sense at all, and it's not even good science. And yet they teach evolution and millions of years like it's a fact, when really it's just a belief. I think it's terrible. Yeah, a terrible lie. Mm -hmm. And that's why we need places like Incredible World. So people can have another opportunity to hear the truth. Yeah. But always remember, even with all the evidence of design we see in these creatures, the very best evidence for creation is the Bible. That's right. And the Bible tells us that God created everything in six short days. Not that millions and billions of years thing. Amen, brother. Well, I better get going. I've got to make an important phone call. Oh, Adventure TV called this morning. They want to come to Incredible World. <gasps> really? Adventure TV? That's kind of a big deal. Uh, so what do they want to do? I don't know. I've got to call them back to find out. Uh, do you think maybe they'd film our show? Well, I suppose that's possible. You mean we might be on TV? <laughs> I better watch this shirt. Ooh, good idea, Cody. Hey, hey, do they still do that uh, award thingy? You mean the world's best theme park award? Yes, they do. Hey, didn't we uh, win that last year? Come on, Gabe. We've won that the last three years in a row. You know, it's a real honor winning that award, considering all the other great theme parks. But best of all, it gives us an opportunity for our message. I'll let you know what's going on as soon as I find out, okay? And in the meantime, let's be sure we're at the top of our game. First impressions are very important. That's right. Come on, Gabe. We've got work to do. Oh, I'm right behind you. Wow. This is exciting. So, Adventure TV is coming to Incrediworld, huh? That's perfect. We'll just have to welcome them, won't we?
Creator, cause the whole world fits together. We know there's a Creator, cause the 